The impact of a railroad strike across the industry, it would be like asking what would be the results if a nuclear bomb went off in New York. Obviously, it would be utter chaos and catastrophe. It seems intentional, like the railroad industry is intentionally trying to create an oppressive work environment so that they can reach their end goal and be able to give more money back to Wall Street. These workers have worked now for the last three years throughout a pandemic, putting themselves and their families at risk without a raise. They have not received any pay increase during that time. At the same time, they've seen their numbers dwindle dramatically. They've also seen the highest profits in the history of railroading over that same stretch of time. They want more with less, and that comes down to people, resources, locomotives, maintenance, everything. Railroads have laid off 45,000 people in the past five years. That means that they are completely incapable of meeting the demand that is placed on our economy. Just on duty time, you are very commonly working 80 plus hours a week. That does not include the time that you're sitting at the away from home terminal. I mean, you might be away from home, subject to the railroad, not with your family for 120 hours in a week. On these long runs like we have, where you're on the train consistently 10, 11, 12 hours, it is not realistic for a human being to be by themselves. There's no gas station to stop at to get a cup of coffee when you're nodding off, when you're getting tired. You can't get up and stretch your legs. Let's say the boards are exhausted the way they are, and you think you're going to work at six in the morning. Nope, there's a shortage of people. You end up getting called to work at one in the morning. When you're tired, you haven't gotten any sleep, you've tossed and turned, and then they expect you to be on a train for 12 hours by yourself. We used to be paid an above average salary because we work an above average lifestyle where we are gone holidays, weekends, but the way inflation is devaluing our purchasing power, that's not really the case anymore. You might only be making like $26 an hour gross when you consider the time that you were on the train, the time after your hours of service expired that you're sitting there in a siding, the time sitting in a hotel up to 16 hours without pay, and the fact that you're having to pay for those meals out of pocket. The sacrifice that we make is not being compensated. In this round of contract negotiations, I believe railroad workers as a whole want four things. An increase in their pay, they wanna keep their health insurance, they want the ability to take time off when they're sick, when they need time with their family without being subject to an oppressive attendance policy, and we don't wanna be forced to one-man cruise the way the railroad wants to cram it down our throat. We'll hear the arguments from both the, the railroads and the unions about what their asks are and what they think is important. They will evaluate the underlying economic circumstances, the state of the industry, and they'll come up with what they believe is a reasonable resolution to this contract dispute, and they will have their recommendation. At that point, there will be another 30-day cooling off period where the parties hopefully will be able to negotiate off of what the recommendation is. When the cooling off period extends, then the parties will be released, so they would be free to engage in a work action. Uh, that would mean you know, potentially a lockout or a, or a strike. I definitely believe that railroad workers this time around are ready to strike. You know, I think people are waking up to how, how important the supply chain is to their daily lives. I mean, that became very clear when we had these big slowdowns and we had empty storefronts, and that was based on underperformance, but no performance would have bigger impacts across the board. Imagine how bad and how bad the backlog would be if the railroad shut down for a week's time, just a week it would be enough that store shelves would be empty. These people do not even care whether there's a railroad industry in 10 years. I care. I have wanted to be an engineer my entire life. I mean, even as a kindergarten, I remember I wanted to be an engineer. 
I want there to be a freight railroad 10 years, 20 years, 50 years, 100 years from now. It seems like essentially these Wall Street cronies are intentionally destroying the industry to absorb as much profit as they can out of it until they've picked it dry and all the blood's gone and then they can just let it fall. If we want to actually start fixing the supply chain, if we want to have real solutions to how do we fix our supply chain and make sure that we're more competitive and that we are meeting the needs of our, our economic system, we need to give these workers the contract they deserve because that's the only way we're going to be able to rebuild this system and make it more effective and make it more efficient, more productive for our, for our country.